Good morning, and thank you so much again for joining me this Tuesday morning for Storytime with Joyce, and we're reading from my book, Betty. It's a longer chapter, so let's start. It is chapter 11, and the title is called The Hoosier Cabinet. Betty and Arvin enjoyed their new home the next month with little or no furniture. Betty didn't care. She loved cooking in her kitchen and found some crates that she and Arvin could eat on. Life continued for Arvin and Betty without incidents beside the normal grind at the factory for Arvin and the twins for Betty. Then one afternoon, good luck came to them, as Arvin would say. Arvin gathered up some of his buddies from the factory and arranged for all of them to help surprise Betty. Once again, his wheeling and dealing paid off. Arvin and his buddies finished putting everything in place before Betty got home. She didn't know that Arvin had talked someone from the factory into giving them a crib and a dressing table for their soon-to-arrive baby. Some folks at the settlement house had chipped in and bought them a kitchen table and four wooden chairs. And Arvin had bought a sofa and a couple of side tables, along with lamps for each table from a furniture repossession store. However, the biggest surprise to Betty was going to be the Hoosier cabinet for the kitchen. Then all sat back and admired their work. They were pretty proud of themselves. Arvin's buddies left and Arvin sat down on the sofa, sofa just to stretch out and watch the traffic through the big picture window. He was thinking how he had done it again, how he did strike up some great deals when he heard the doorknob rattle. Arvin called out, Betty, is that you? Yes, Arvin, it's me. I don't know how to get this key to work. Let me in. Arvin opened the door and said, here, let me show you. Just turn the key this way. It's a little hard. It needs oil. I'll see to it tomorrow. Come in, I have a surprise for you. The first thing Betty saw was the Hoosier cabinet. Oh, goodness, look at that. How did you get that? That must have cost us all the money we had, Betty said with surprise. I bought it from a fella at work. He and his wife were moving in with his folks and didn't have the room for it. I got it cheap. Do you like it? Arvin, I love it. Look, it has a pull-out, tilt-down flower bin and one for sugar, too. So many drawers. I can't wait to start rolling out my pie dough on this counter. Oh, so much room. Then she saw the table and chairs. Where did these pretty wooden chairs come from? Some of the people from the settlement house chipped in and bought this table and chairs for us. They brought them over this afternoon. Now go look in the front room, Arvin suggested. Betty had tears in her eyes as she walked into the other room. A sofa and table and lamps. I've dreamed about having pretty furniture like this, Betty said. I made great deal with the store that repossesses furniture from people who couldn't make the arranged payments. I used some of our savings, but since I made such a great deal, I couldn't pass it up. It'll be nice to sit in this room by the window and watch all the cars in action outside. You are becoming a master wheeler dealer. Oh, Arvin, it'll be nice to just sit on something soft. Those hard chairs at the settlement house were so uncomfortable and were hard to sit in so straight up and down. One last thing. Let's, let's, one last thing. Then let's see it. I'm getting hungry. Go into the bedroom. There's more, Betty asked. Yeah, Betty, there's more. Come and see. Betty walked in. <laughs> and a dressing table. Where? How? I got both from someone at the factory. His baby is too big for them and they're not planning on having any more kids since they already have three. I talked them into giving them to me. They do need a good scrubbing though. By this time Betty was actually crying with joy and disbelief. I can make them look brand new. Thank you Arvin for getting all this stuff. I can't believe all of this. I am so happy. It's like a dream, Betty said through her tears. Betty, can we eat now? Of course, you deserve a good meal for all the work you've done here. Let's go sit on our new chairs and eat off our new table. Yeah, after carrying all the stuff, I worked up a big appetite. 
Right now I'm so hungry I could eat a cow. I'm pretty tired too. Factory got in a big order, so all of us workers have to go in extra early tomorrow. I made a chicken casserole for Dr. Russell, and there's extra for us. Let us let me just get it out of my bag. Betty, if nothing else, you're a great cook. Thanks, Arvin, and there's even enough for seconds. Arvin and Betty continued to talk over supper. Actually, Betty just listened to Arvin boast about what a wheeler dealer he was. All of a sudden, he stopped boasting and said, I think I'll just help myself to some more of this casserole. It's mighty good. Thanks again, Arvin. Dr. Russell may be getting us some sheets and towels. Isn't that nice, Betty said. Yeah, but we don't need no handouts. You're getting mighty chummy with that Dr. Russell, aren't you, Arvin said sarcastically. Stop, you're being silly. They're just grateful because I take such good care of his twins. Plus, he's a nice, honorable man. Yeah, sure, Arvin said sarcastically. Betty ignored his remark and just continued on with her conversation while they went into the front room to enjoy their new sofa. I'm going to have Serena come over next week for tea. She hasn't seen our new place, and I want to use some of our nice cups and saucers that your folks gave us for our wedding. I think I'll make some nice bread to go with our tea. Wait until she sees the Hoosier cabinet and the rest of this stuff. She's going to be so happy for us. I'm so glad that nonsense of all those women marching is over. She wouldn't have been able to get through with all those women with signs. What were those signs all about anyway? Arvin? Arvin? Betty looked at Arvin slumped over with his head on the arm of their new sofa, fast asleep, knowing he hadn't heard a word she said. Chicago was home to one of the nation's most robust women's suffrage movements. Women went marching in Chicago for women's rights to vote. Women could be seen carrying signs on the busiest streets in the city. The suffragettes' effort led to a big victory in 1913 when Illinois won the fight to vote in presidential and local elections. Illinois became the first state east of the Mississippi that allowed women to vote in the presidential election. And that's what the suffragettes movement was all about. So I'll see you next Tuesday and have a fabulous week. You can go to Amazon.com and look for Betty by Joyce Bennett Hall, or you can go to my website, JoyceBennettHall.com. Bye.